everyone, it's Brianna and Huston from Scattered Seeds Creative Arts. Today we're talking to Jan Powers. Jan only started calling herself an artist in the past couple of years, and she eventually founded her business, Henbit Art. We're going to be talking to her um, about everything from, uh, from nature to clocks to finding inspiration in art forms outside of our own. So here we go. Hi Jan, how are you? Hi, nice to see you. So let's jump right in. So maybe you could uh, give us a little bit of a background on you. What are you, what would you say or describe your creative practices? Well, I'm a new artist, so I'm middle aged, but my daughter's actually a, an artist and has been since she was a toddler. Um, so so evident. And um, I've I've done little things, you know. I've done basket weaving and cross stitch over the many years. But have kind of, but kind of put art aside for many many years. And thinking about it, I was actually thinking about an art teacher I had in I think it was fourth grade, who was really critical of some piece I did. And I feel like I almost shut down at that point for fifty years. In two thousand seventeen, I was looking for something fun to do for my daughter's thirtieth birthday, and I came across um, acrylic pouring which she had never tried, We neither of us had ever tried. And I just thought, what a fun thing to do. Got the supplies, went away for a long weekend, and we just had so much fun creating over the weekend. I had lots of extra supplies. So over the course of that winter, that was 2017, 18, I just kept pouring and just exploring with paint. And I just felt like I had a new lease on life. It was, it was something like totally new to me. What is uh, the, your favorite thing that you've ever poured? There's a couple ways to do pouring. One is in, in a space that's contained, like, like a round serving tray that had sides. So the paint has to stay in that contained. Another way to do it is something like this painting behind me where the paint can roll off the sides. And you get really a diff, very different look when you can pour the paint off because if you have a little section that you don't like, you can kind of manipulate the piece to kind of angle that paint off. I have recently started doing some clocks kind of with an ocean theme and I have this one that's sort of like I keep reaching to try and recreate it because it just it was I don't know just I just love the colors were just right and the look of the waves in the resin the white you know paint in the resin that looks like waves was like just so perfect. <laughs> So I think that's, right now, that's one of my favorite pieces. There are really special pieces that, I, that they're hard to let go. Even today, as I was photographing some pieces um, that I'm sending off, I'm like, oh, so it's, I, I'm glad I can photograph them and just kind of remember them. Kind of give us a little bit of a sense on like kind of what season you're in, how that's kind of affected uh, your art um, and maybe the way you share it. Last year was my first full year in business. Mm -hmm. So the actual getting out and selling my art. I do my art shows like spring, mostly spring and fall. Coming into the winter, that's kind of my production time. In January, I got going after the holidays and was feeling like I'm, I'm in full production mode as far as, you know, just wanting to keep a good pace. And I'd set um, a schedule for my art, which I'd never done before. So I had certain days that were studio time and portions of days in the rest of the week that were like photographing and doing research online and, and things like that. When the coronavirus hit and things started shutting down, um, my, all my shows started shutting down. So it was just kind of like gradually they were coming in, all the emails to all the shows that I'd gotten accepted to. So it took a little bit of wind out of my sails, like, you know, this time period has for so many, for everybody in some way. So I kind of just let that more rigid studio time um, kind of go and just allow it to be actually sort of a place of escape instead of production. When you're a little bit more relaxed, your creativity is, has a different flow to it than when you feel a little pressure. So um, it gave me time to do things that I wouldn't have had time to do. So I actually came up with a new line. They're like a dot art. Um, and so it gave me time to sort of explore an, a different technique that I'd never tried before, which was, which was really fun, which I wouldn't have done had I had my shows going. You're just inspired to keep, keep going. I came up with all these questions to ask when you were talking and then you answered all of them and everything <laughs> that you could say. 
Yeah, this should be easy. Um, tea or coffee? Um, coffee. We have a cup or we have a coffee machine that grinds it, and so every morning I have a cup of coffee with. Um, I'm decreasing the amount of half and half, no sugar. Coffee in the morning and a cup after lunch. Mm -hmm. But when I'm with my sister, it's straight tea. If you could just share with us um, some of your main inspirations, whether it's um, some of your artist friends, community members. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to kind of diverge and, and give you a few. I would say my main inspiration is nature. So once I started creating with paints and playing with not just pouring them together, but actually creating colors by mixing, I was so, uh, my eyes were opened afresh to the colors around me, to, I mean, you can't see it, but outside my window, you know, I have this dappled sunlight blowing and the wind's blowing through the leaves and um, all the variations of, of the spring green colors. And last summer, I um, caught a, a monarch butterfly landed on my hand and I took a photograph of it and I ran up to my studio and I was like, I'm going to recreate these colors somehow. I could not do it. I could not create the the depth of those colors. I'm always looking at the sky. I'm always looking at the color of the clouds as the sun is rising or setting. I didn't realize how many colors there were of the ocean, you know, a Cape Cod ocean or a New Jersey shore, a Florida ocean or Pacific ocean. So I'm just inspired and um, am always kind of reaching for something new. As far as artists, um, I'm inspired by other acrylic pour artists. So there's a number of them that are far more experienced and um, kind of push me to try new things and to up my quality. I actually had this really sweet um, artist up in Canada that I just really love. Her, her, uh, her site is called Lux Art. And I posted some charcuterie boards that I had made. And she had zoomed in on my picture and saw some little flaws. And she was so sweet. She DM'd me and she was like, oh, here's a tip on how you can make these, you know, make that edge a little bit cleaner or better, which really helped, you know. And then the other person who really inspires me again, I've mentioned my daughter, but she's really pushed me to do um, really quality work. So just kind of the finer finishes of my work. She's really encouraged me and in my packaging and my business cards, all those little elements of, of doing this as a business. She's really encouraged me and pushed me to, to really, you know, seek to do the best quality that I can. How do you kind of deal with roadblocks, kind of dryness in, in, in your making? Yeah, I do have moments where I just... There's a lot of um, sort of self-doubt about me as an artist because I'm not a fine artist. I haven't been to art school. I don't check all those boxes. I don't check any of those boxes. So there are times when I have a lot of self-doubt. And usually right when I'm sort of in the midst of that, somebody will call or somebody will respond to something I've posted on Instagram. And I don't want to get all my energy from people's responses, but it's amazing how encouraging, you know, a good response on an Instagram post can be. I do have a number of artists that have become part of my community, which has been a wonderful surprise in this whole process um, through Instagram, who've been very encouraging, who taught me, who've encouraged me. And this one woman in particular um, down in Virginia, I was kind of just like in a lull where I just, nothing seemed to be coming out well. And I just was like, oh, I don't know about this. And she just said, you just have to keep creating. And so I just, instead of just like sort of shutting down my studio until I felt like I was inspired and everything I was doing was beautiful, I just got back in the studio and I just, in my profession, <laughs> just started playing with paint again and tried to, you know, return to the joy of, of creating that I had at first. And just getting back in the studio and working with, you know, my materials. It was great because, you know, sometimes you come up with great stuff and it's a surprise in, in the way I create. It's not always controlled and you have something in your mind, but it doesn't always come out the way you want it. Just getting back in the studio, just keeping the process going and, um, 
and looking for those surprises that are like, wow, this is something really special. And in my in my craft, you can't you can't recreate something. You can use the exact same colors, the exact same paints, and it'll come out totally different. So it's just fun when you have those moments when you're like, wow, this is a really special piece. Another thing that comes to mind is to try something totally different. So if I'm working on something and I just the colors or the 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 piece that I'm doing is just not just nothing seems to quite be right. It's kind of nice to be able to turn to put that down and try something totally different. Maybe I'm working with paints for a while, then maybe I'll switch to I can also put color in my resin and that's like a little different process. So it looks a little different, it comes out a little different. And then there's the other side, I guess, is to sometimes just switch out of the art side of it. Um, my daughter just got me a magazine called In, Her, In the Studio. I think it's called In the Studio. And it's just helpful just to read about people doing art that's totally different from mine um, and just seeing how they do their art and what that space is for them, their studio space. The other part um, when I get a roadblock is um, I clean my studio. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working, sometimes I'm working on several things, you know, paint's drying over here, resin's drying over there. And sometimes it can get just kind of messy when you just keep working, working and don't kind of stop. So sometimes I just clean off everything, you know, and um, set my table up again. I have a four by eight table in my studio and just get that all cleaned off. And sort of starting fresh sometimes is really helpful and just getting going again. So um, you do a lot of uh, shows and you you share your work a lot. What is sharing your work like? How does that how does that impact you? That first show when people responded to my art really encouraged me to just kind of keep going. And um, so it's amazing the impact people have on us when when they respond to our art, right? Something that I've really been super aware of because as an artist, which you are both artists, you're sensitive to how people are responding to something you've created or are in the process of creating it. And so um, it's made me more sensitive to other artists to be inquisitive and curious, even if it's an art form that I don't resonate with exactly, um, to just kind of like spend the time to stop and think this person took time to create this thing and to just allow them to sort of express back to me why they created what they did and their process. And when someone does that with me, it's amazing. Like, even if they don't absolutely love everything I've done or love something that they're looking at, the fact that they're interested is just so encouraging. So I guess I'm learning in a new way, to see art in a new way. It's opened my eyes to other artists and to see people who wouldn't necessarily call themselves an artist as real artists, like teachers. Like I have a friend who's a teacher and the way she goes about teaching and thinking about her students, thinking about how she's gonna run her class, there's an artistic element to it. And so it's like this whole world has opened up to me, which has been really exciting. I love the fact that you got into art later because that's something that's so big in our, in Scattered Seeds community, that's like a really important part. We just feel that everyone's a creator. And so for you to kind of like find this new uh, way of enjoying art, I appreciate that so much. And it opens up kind of new ways of going about relationship, which I think is mm -hmm. so cool because you can understand somebody better by understanding kind of the fruit of them, you know, in a way in their art is, is a way to kind of better understand people too, which I think is really cool. What is a, a favorite book or movie of yours? I would say a book that I sort of ate up recently in the last couple of years would be Just Mercy. Um, and actually we just watched the movie last night and we both sat there and cried for a good part of the end of the movie. I love, um, you know, movies that the English countryside and I love historic movies. I knew that question was coming, and I just denied it. That's I right. know that if I was faced with that question, I would not be able yeah. to answer it at yeah. all. I'm listening to, because of the times we're in, um, have, you know, just sort of renewed for me um, my own desire and need to kind of grow and learn. Um, I, I am listening to How to Be an Anti-Racist um, 
So I started listening to it when I was working in my studio and I was just like, I can't, I can't work and listen to this book at the same time. So, so I, I do do listen, I do listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, and actually parts I am in, like inspired, like, uh, how things are made is the podcast where they talk about different companies and, you know, kind of their journey. So that's been really, that's been kind of fun to listen to um, in my studio. So do you have uh, just daily practices that you can share, whether it, it might not just be your art, but just helps. having two cups of coffee throughout the day yeah, or yeah. like whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. What else do I do besides drink coffee? <laughs> my day starts, I'm an, uh, I'm an early bird. So I love, um, I love getting up early. So with my cup of coffee, um, because I'm a Christian, I, I usually spend, you know, about a half an hour reading the Bible in the morning. I like to have space so that I'm free to respond to people in my life. Um, I like having the freedom if someone has a need or um, an opportunity comes up or I, I get together with a couple of my friends. It's hard to keep that in my routine. Like it's costly, you know, I have things to do, I have errands to run, I have, you know, whatever it is. And so I, I really make a point of keeping that in my life because I feel like it's centering and it's just important and just to celebrate life together um, when there's things to celebrate and to mourn when there's things to mourn. So it's, that's an important part of my life too. Final question here. Um, where do you hope to be uh, creatively in you know maybe a year maybe further than that i want to keep exploring and kind of pushing out the boundaries of what i do it would be very easy to just stay with the same products and you know maybe different colors but you know kind of pumping out the same thing so i like i want to keep pushing myself sometimes i don't like it but to keep pushing myself to try new things to explore because i want to try different techniques and i want to try creating different products um, so when I started this year, I said, said, I kind of felt like it was the year of open hands, like just like, okay, whatever's happening this year, I'm gonna just like go with it and accept it. Of course, that's been a lot to, <laughs> to take, but I kind of want to just live my art that way as well, like just sort of open hands, like exploring and trying new things and exposing myself to different artists and different experiences that'll inspire me. I love, you know, that people appreciate what I make and want to have it in their homes. And I feel like that's such a privilege. It's, it's fun to have, actually have um, a number of friends who are just, were kind of feeling like middle-aged and didn't know, you know, what they were doing with their lives and were saying, oh, I need to find something fun to do with my life. And I didn't really, I wasn't seeking that and I wasn't looking for it. And I just feel like, I just feel like God just dropped it in my lap. He just said, here's a gift. And I've just really been enjoying it. So I'm just going to keep enjoying it, I guess. And so many other people are going to keep enjoying it yes. too. Could you just um, explain your, your company really fast and the name? When I was looking for a name, so that would have been the spring of 2018, because I was like, wow, if I'm going to go to a show, I have to have a name. I have to have business cards. So um, my name is Jan Powers. And if you pull that up, you get all sorts of people and all sorts of businesses. So that didn't really work. So then uh, there's the, we have this beautiful field in the back of our yard. And there's this little plant called a henbit. And um, it grows out there. It's a little vine and has the most, it has these really beautiful little flowers that literally are, I don't know, maybe in half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And um, they're just this pop of purple when you're walking out in the field. So one day I took my camera because I couldn't see them close enough. So I took my, my, my phone, took a picture of it and blew it up. And it was such a beautiful flower that I just thought this would be just like an, a, a kind of a fun name for my business because it's something you could pass by. You know, you kind of see it. It's a pop of color, but you could easily just walk by. But when you look more closely, it's something beautiful. The leaves have just these beautiful scalloped edges and it grows prolifically around here. And so um, I looked online and there's no, the only other uh, business that uses it is a restaurant down in Texas. So I thought that's me, Henbit Art. So you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Henbit Art. I also have an Etsy store um, and 
trying to keep my products updated there too. One winter I was walking and I could see it, I could see the hen bit under the ice in the winter and I'm like you're still there so it's like me in my studio during the winter you know I'm still there but I'm under the ice nobody knows I'm, what I'm doing <laughs>